Today on Experts Showcase, our guest is Rosalind Spiegel, but we're going behind the episode that we just shot, all about the number one key to leadership success. And welcome to Expert Showcase behind the episode. Above me, we have our awesome interview guest. Yes, awesome has come out again, Mark. I think the rest of the day she'll be an awesome day. Uh, Rosalind Spiegel is an incredible, uh, we just had an incredible time creating her latest episode. And over here, that's three in a row, baby. I'm cooking yeah, the right. gas on the point today. Um, <laughs> we have our incredible interviewer, Dr. Mark Cosman. So without any further ado, before the ado, after the ado, and through the ado, Mark, why don't you go ahead and take it away and get us started? As long as we stay away from the doo-doo. So, you know, come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rosalind, we're going to have a little chat about, you know, your episode, but not so, not too specifically, more about your background and how you uh, how you market yourself, really, because that's uh, that's what our audience is dying to know about, how they can market themselves better. So we're going to use you as a little bit of an example uh, of what you do and, and how you, you know, get uh, leads and how you get uh, new business for yourself. While we're having that chat, Chris is going to be taking some notes in the background that our audience can actually watch and see on screen. So we have to behave ourselves or he'll, you know, call us out and scream and we won't know what he's saying. Um, and then we'll flip it over to Chris and Chris will play coach consultant for us and kind of feed back a little bit what he uh, heard in our discussion and highlight some, some key points for the benefit of people who want to learn from this example. And uh, Does that make sense? A lot of sense. All right, cool. So, anyway, welcome behind the episode, uh, Rosalind. Tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into this world of uh, of consulting and coaching. And um, I, I know you work with nonprofits, but tell me a little bit about you know how you got there. Sure. I was a nonprofit executive director for many, many years. I had a headed up a local nonprofit, and then I was the interim director of the national organization, which is great. So, um, and then I continued to do work with the nonprofit community as a consultant for a few years, mostly religious institutions. Um, uh, I went back to school in the meantime, got a master's in organization development, and then I realized that for leaders to lead change through their organizations, they really also had to model that change themselves. So, getting a leadership coaching certification seemed like a good idea. So, I went back and did that. So, that's my background. So, you've been training away for, for many, many uh, years, one thing after the next, right? That's right. Yeah, I never, right, right. We were just talking before. I've never met a self assessment or any kind of new theory that I haven't enjoyed learning about in some way or another. And then, well, I, I can relate, Rosalind. I can definitely relate. So, um, tell me a little bit about so so you you went from running an organization to the you know the, the, this I guess this is a path that uh, that many a consultant kind of follows they're in an industry and then they step out of that industry but not really they they take an outsider's perspective to help uh, other organizations develop and grow um, and, and it sounds like that's that's kind of the path you've taken right. Uh, it is. It is. It it is. Um, it's been great. I've enjoyed working within an organization. Um, I decided to go out on my own a couple of years ago because I, you know, I really wanted to work with. I mean, I wanted to continue to work with nonprofits. I also, you know, the funding or the funding world in the nonprofit world was getting a little tight. Mm -hmm. um, and also, quite frankly, I sort of had gotten sort of my. I had too much experience and and sort of pedigree to come in at a bottom level in any corporate position, um, but not enough corporate experience to go into corporate, and then I realized I wasn't that interested in doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to go out on my own and, and continue to work with nonprofits because my own, my own personal vision is that I want to help make the world a better place, and I think nonprofits do that. So Sure, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about how you uh, get connected to organizations. How, how do they find you? How do you find them? How do you try to get visible? You know, I mean, uh, one of the key things, uh, just to sort of set that stage, Chris and I are, <clears throat> are often talking about the fact that people need to cultivate visibility, obviously, to get found. They need to make sure that they're demonstrating their credibility in, in terms of, 
you know, that they're the right person for the job and, and ideally eventually position themselves as, as kind of an authority in, in their niche area of expertise. So how, how do you do that visibility part? How do you get seen and found by an organization? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there are a few different things I've done. Um, I've, I've cultivated relationships with other consultants. So I and, and sort of have a network of consultants, and we support one another. Sort of external <coughs> consultants that work together, and you know, refer to one another, and that's very satisfying, of course, because if you're a solopreneur, then it's great to have that kind of support network. Sure. Um, I also engage in continuous learning. We talked about that before. So right. if I'm in a course, I just finished one called Theory with Otto Scharmer, which was fascinating. There were lots of other people from nonprofits and other sectors and consultants. So to kind of develop those relationships and expand my network in that way. And then I just try and go to where nonprofits are. So there are nonprofit workshops and nonprofit round tables and, you know, sort of drinking a lot of coffee, going to a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not too many chicken dinners along with them, right? So, yeah. So, so you're, you're trying to make sure that you're getting in the room literally with uh, the right people, uh, the people who are, are able to connect you to that. You've got a network of complementary, uh, you know, consultants and, I, and I, if I'm reading through the lines of what you're saying, so you've got... Uh, you know, a network of consultants, but you probably each have very unique, you know, specialties, and so you can refer back and forth to each other in terms of, hey, no, Rosalind's the the go-to person for this. Am I am I in the right ballpark there? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and then same with coaching too. I mean, you can, you know, I belong to the International Coach Federation, and you can meet a coach. We'll coach you on. You can. I mean, you can't imagine how many different kinds of coaches there are. So if somebody needs a career coach, I'm, I'm just not that person, but I know. Right. We were great at that, so. Mm -hmm. So you can refer and uh, and you know f help people find the right coach or the right consultant for the right issue that they're trying to work on. Uh, yeah. Great. Um, to what extent does the the World Wide Web uh, you know play into your world? I mean, I know that uh, it, you know there's a lot that is literally you know uh, face to face time and being in the right room and, and networking, but uh, does the web play a role for you? The web does. I mean, I think when people meet me, then they want to go onto the website. So I think that's another layer of credibility. If you've got your own, so they're going to they're go check you out, right? Check I mean, you out, right? So if you've got you know a decent looking website, and I hope mine is more than just decent looking. <laughs> Thank you to the person that helped design it, and um, you know LinkedIn page and that sort of thing. So I think you know. You know, in consulting, it really is a lot of trust. Um, can people refer one another? So there's that first layer, right? And then if you sort of and have that trust and you, you know, sort of make it to the second step, then one of those second steps is to be checked out online and for them to yeah. check out your online presence and then hopefully, you know, one thing will lead to another. I really want to underscore that because I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with people who are not just coaches, consultants, small business owners, uh, all different kinds who say, "Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't do much marketing. I, I, I you know, all of my, all of what I do is, you know, networking and going to to meetings and things like that." And what you just said is is what I always kind of call it, their attention to is, "Yeah, that's great," except that you know you got to assume that someone is going to do a background check of sorts on you yep. and if they find nothing how does that make that person feel or if they find outdated information how does that make that person feel does that really inspire confidence or does it leave them kind of scratching their head and say well you know maybe this person's great at what they do but how do i know so that that is uh, an excellent point to uh, to make sure that people understand that your your depth of presence is is there for people who to check out not just find you through through organic search they they're going to search your name and you want to actually this is great advice to everyone google your name every so often make sure you're happy with what you see uh, it, it is kind of looking in the electronic mirror right uh, great. So, so you've you've built a website. You've you've built. Uh, uh, and do you uh, do you write? Do you blog? Do you do articles? Do you do interviews? Well, of course you do interviews. You're doing one right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I do. I have written. I've written an article here and there, which is great. And um, I, you know, I've been thinking about doing a little bit more blogging. I've got um, some notes that I've been taking this year in particular for blogs and things like that. But I haven't quite. I haven't quite taken that step yet. Okay. And one more question before I flip this over to Chris. Um, you know, I usually ask it earlier, but I realize I didn't really ask it very clearly, which is 
how do you try to define your specific slice of expertise and, and the flip side of that, who is kind of the ideal audience that you're looking to connect with and reach? Right. Well, you know, um, the nonprofit world is really where I've decided to stick to. Mm -hmm. um, it's my first love. It's what wakes me up in the morning. It's, you know, it's the sector that I really enjoy working with. I think the people that are involved in nonprofits are. <clears throat> Fabulous, selfless, you know, up to really great things. I mean, I meet people who are up to such great things and doing tremendous work in the world. So it's really inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. So those are the folks that, you know, I, I I try and seek out as clients. What was the next, what was the second half of your question? Well, you know, they're, they're just sort of two halves of the same issue, which is, you know, what what's the niche area that you focus on? And then who are the people? Who's the audience? And so, you know, nonprofits, you mentioned religious organizations, uh, uh, certainly. So people who are out to really you know, use organizational power to do good for the, for the world, right? Right. And, that, you know, it's interesting because, you know, a lot of nonprofits are these little teeny weeny itty bitty organizations and, uh, you know, don't really think they've got the budget or need to do strategic planning and it's, it's so important to really understand you know, where they're going and what their plan are, how to engage their board and stakeholders, what kind of leader they need to be as the organization goes through its own life cycle. So there's, you know, there's a lot that I think I can offer to a nonprofit to help them get their work done. Excellent. All right, Chris, I'm going to turn this over to you. Otherwise, I will talk all day. You know, I've, I've been known to do that. Uh, it's a pleasure talking with Rosalind, so that I can come up with 10 more topics for us to drill into. But, but enlighten us on, on what you're hearing. You know, what, what if, what, what if, how can you kind of feedback what we're talking about and, and take my babblings and make them relevant? <laughs> okay, so you know that would save you from yourself right now? Is that what exactly. you're trying save, to say? Save me from myself, Chris. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, Rosalind, great episode. For those of you who've made it this far, you definitely want to stick around and and uh, you know watch Rosalind's episode. And we'll keep plugging that in a little bit. Um, but one of the things I wanted to to talk to you about real quick um, is I loved your journey, um, and and I'm pausing for a second because I don't want to completely put you on the spot here, but I hope what I'm about to do will help you. That's our that's our goal here. So take this from where it's. Take this from where it's it's coming from. Um, we just asked you about your ideal client, and you said nonprofits. Um, can you get a little more specific? Do you work with large nonprofits or small nonprofits? Do you work with, um, and when I say large, you know, do you work with nonprofits that have, you know, are are fundraising upwards of a million dollars or or south of a million dollars? Is it is it ten million? Is it is it a hundred employees? Is it five employees? Can you can you identify a clearer niche and a clearer um, sub segment of nonprofits that are your ideal clients? Well, yeah, I mean, an ideal client, of course, is a client that's really motivated to do great work, right? So there's that. Um, but of course, to really do a full blown strategic plan, it does take you know a certain amount of financial stability to finance that. Um, and so, you know, if a nonprofit can um, generate um, a million or ten, up to ten, you know, so we're talking about employees of, you know, a few to twenty, something like that. Um, so, you know, I would say more on the smaller side, more on the smaller side, although I have worked with non um, organizations and done strategic planning where there have been 200 people in the room. So, you know. Right. So here's the reason, and, and without going, because of course, as you know, from being a, from being a coach, it's funny, folks, you know, a lot of you who've watched these episodes before know that, uh, that I'm a John, Ma you know, founding partner in John Maxwell's coaching, teaching public speaking certification program. So I was very eager to have Rosalind, Rosalind on because she's also a leadership coach. And I started my journey in leadership coaching and now have, have uh, you know, have, come into the video content marketing and realize that this and motivational speaking and that is is where I'm supposed to be. Um, so, you, you know, it's something that um, when you go through that, um, how, can I, how can I take a step back? Complete squirrel, the hamsters are running loose, Mark. I completely <laughs> lost where I was going. Lost your but, train of thought. You're supposed to be saving the, me from myself, you exactly. know? Exactly. <laughs> here's the... I, I think I might know where you're going. Okay, where was yeah. I going? Okay. Yeah, because you know you've got that great experience, so you know you listen for how to ask the right question, 
right? So if you're a leadership coach, what you're really doing is coaching through a process. And so how you get someone through a process is to really think about what are the questions I need to ask to get that person to where they want to go. And to further that, we don't have enough time to go into that full process. That is exactly <laughs> where I was going. Was the fact oh, okay, good. I was going to say, but and that's what I was going to say is the fact that I started asking the questions and I was just illustrating to you and to the audience, you know, kind of that look, you know, as you know, Rosalind, if I were to ask you more questions about your niche and, and, and do more true coaching, it'd take a lot longer than 15 or 20 minutes. It would be, you know, so I'm going to pause right there from, from the questions um, and just say part of what we <clears> talked <throat> to our clients about is really knowing their niche because of the resonance factor and to build visibility, credibility, and authority within the niche. So it just invite you, and I would invite you to look, a, to I would say even continue to look harder at identifying the, the niche you're going after. Um, I know you're ready to success. I'm sure identifying your niche can make you an even greater success and really niching down. Um, I've met a lot of people in my journeys coaching people who respond to that first question exactly like you did. They say, well, we like working with these people, but we have spoken to bigger audiences or we have had bigger clients. And if you don't, would you mind me mentoring you for just one quick second? No, please. This is great. Thank you. So the what I always have found is the challenge is what's happening in their brain is they're saying we don't want to lose that big client that might be watching us because we want them to know we've done big work. So we want that big client, um, but we really are more comfortable in the small. We really know the small is where we're at. And you know, I say two things to those people. One, it's great that you want the big client, and it's great that you that you want to go out there um, in preparation to continue to get more big clients and up. If you're more comfortable in the small client space, go after it and brag about it and say, look, I deal with nonprofits who have under 20 employees and who are fundraising, you know, south of $10 million. Boom. Okay, if you've got a $10 million budget and, and I'm just throwing numbers out there, you know the industry space better than I do. So you pick your numbers. But what we found is the minute you start talking in those terms, you start to resonate with those people and they just they they come to they come to you. In fact, Mark, we we just got done with an interview with another person who was never going to go in the, in the direction she was going to go in, decided to speak at a conference once and wasn't even selling anything. She went to the back of the room and people flooded <clears throat> to talk to her because what she said resonated with them. And she, it kind of the niche chose her. Yeah, that was a, that was a line. It was very good. <laughs> sometimes you choose your niche, and sometimes your niche chooses you. <laughs> so, so both for so both for you, Rosalind, and for um, you know, for everybody else, especially Mark, the guy in the black chair is back. He he took a break. He he got a, got a little bit of water. He, he's not drinking Monster. No, he didn't get the Monster. He's you know, Monster Energy. If you still want to come on, we'll, we'll be happy to have you sponsor. But anyway, my shameless plug. Um, I didn't do my shameless dating plug yet today. That'll come next segment so anyway I think you just did <laughs> yeah I, I could have been so um, but the, the point is is when looking at a niche and when talking when building visibility credibility and authority the more you can resonate with people the more you can speak in their language the better you're going to resonate and 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 the faster your your business is going to grow kind of makes sense oh absolutely thank you that's great Excellent. You're welcome. And I'm sure, you know, folks, Rosalind probably knew all that already. She's a very <laughs> smart woman. She's just human. At this point, she's probably just humoring me. So, 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 it's, so, it's, so it's, it's okay though. It's, 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 you know, it's a good thing. Um, the other thing I loved what you said was that you started to gain visibility by cultivating relationships. So what you were doing is the, you know, the good old ground roots, you know, grassroots movement, you know, at the ground level and just start to create those relationships and get people to know, like, and trust you. Um, to, to get people to know, like, and trust you that way. So that's, you know, I applaud you. It's a great way to get started. Um, you know, once again, what I've seen, Mark, is, you know, that, that thread through, you know, that thread through her past, and you know, executive director of a nonprofit and, and going through following into, you know, finally finding her, you know, her calling. Um, and I love, Rosalind, how you said a great online presence builds trust and credibility. And it really, you know, is what is like <clears throat> to meet you in person, but they want to get that extra, that extra validation from seeing online. Because let's face it, there's a lot of coaching programs that will tell you, just worry about coaching and don't worry about your online presence. You don't need a great website. You know, a lot of people will say, hey, I succeeded without a great website. It's like, yes, you did. You're great. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're building an eight-figure business. I love you. I applaud you for it. The times have changed in the last five years, and, and you know if you're not 
as good and as charismatic as you are, then you need that other validation for people go to go to, right? Sure. Excellent. Absolutely. Um, so I do have a question for you because we didn't get deep into it. From a video content creation or video content marketing, um, what are you currently doing right now to produce any additional video content other than being on our show, of course? <laughs> Nothing. Interesting. This is it. This is this is her 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 video moment. This is my video debut. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> so was that a conscious decision or literally? And and let me ask the question the right way. Did you consciously make the decision to avoid video, or did you make a conscious decision to choose other mediums over video, or is this just or option C? Is it just kind of what happened? You went other ways and and never thought about video. <laughs> Um, well, you know, I did do a little bit of radio talk show hosting, which was a lot of fun. Um, so uh, I, I enjoy, you know, the broadcast media, and I don't know if you call them radio broadcast media, but um, but that was a lot of fun. And um, but just to build my, my business, I really know that when people hire consultants, they hire them because they've met them and they know them, and there's you know a bit of a relationship. You can begin to build some trust. So I really have been focusing on this, you know, the one-on-one, -on -one, the networking, the getting my word out there, the building my support network. So, you know, now this is my second year, so I am ready to think about where do I need to strategically put my time um, so I can continue to do that, uh, maybe do it a little bit more smarter, more smarter, so how you say that? Um, more, better, more betterer, I think, is better, the right yeah, way to say it. More betterer, yeah. And, <laughs> be smarter about that and um, you know so beginning to think about how I want to allocate my you know my, my networking resources so to speak so exactly so a follow-up question to that would be do you find yourself answering the same questions over and over to people and maybe not all of them but you find that there might be 10 or 20 questions that you can pretty much guarantee that within the course of a week or two weeks everybody you meet is going to ask you at least one of these questions in your in your you know in your uh, you know, when you network and when you meet them for the first time sure yeah okay and do you see what you do question right so what, what kind of consulting do you do mm-hmm Right, and how you know what that like what what consulting do you do? Um, what's your you know what's your value? Maybe even your value added proposition, so to speak. What's your unique selling proposition? Um, even down to you know well, you know if I work with you, what you know what what type of results can I kind of expect? Or what would you recommend I do? You know, as I, if if your networking is anything like mine was when I was focusing solely on coaching, you know, you get a lot of those coaching questions. You'll get the same type of coaching questions like, what's the first thing I need to do? If I want to be a better leader, what's the first thing I need to do? Um, do you get questions like that on a regular basis? Hmm, I don't. Interesting. Well, see, we, we now have an answer. If anyone ever asked, what's the number one key to leadership success? <laughs> you, you have an answer that is, uh, you know, going to be, you know, on your website, on the web, on YouTube, uh, you know, for, for people to find. I mean, uh, that, that's one of the, the cool things about doing it is that when they do search you, I mean, they, they find some of these uh, more detailed answers already already waiting for them so well and that's what I was gonna say and I know you're you know uh, and mark I'm gonna wrap up my um, my piece of this at this point um, for, for Rosalind and for everybody except the person on the tan the person on the tan recliner you haven't been listening this whole time it's okay <laughs> it's okay I know I'm boring sometimes it's all good you can go back to sleep this isn't for you but for everybody else um, you know when you start to think about getting more visibility online what you want to do is start looking at the questions you're getting on a regular basis mm -hmm. and saying what questions are people asking me on the regular on a regular basis and the second piece you want to do is say in all my consulting engagements and everything I do I wish people would ask me these five or ten questions because if they would ask me these before we started we could save them time money and we could get them to where they want to be faster so as you kind of look at things and as you start to 
to look at your business and as you start to look at possibly creating content, as you start to look at expand, you know, expanding the amount of content you have online, maybe a little bit of blogging, that sort of thing, start to look at what questions do you get asked on a regular basis and then look at what questions you wish people would ask you on a regular basis. Mm, that's and it, great. Thank you. And it serves as a great place to start. Um, it serves as a great place to start to build your content and start to set, you know, start to get you the visibility, the credibility, and set you up as a leading authority in your particular niche. So with that, Mark, I'm going to throw it back up to you for any final comments from you and Rosalind before we do the ado and the after ado and in between <laughs> the ado and watch the other episodes to get what that joke is. And I'm shutting up now. Save me from myself. Uh, Thank you. I will save you from yourself again. <laughs> now we're just going to kind of wrap up. And uh, Rosalind, it's been great having you on the show. I, I didn't realize it was truly your video debut. So uh, uh, we would have had more fanfare. We would have had trumpets. We might have even had you know a virtual cupcake or something. Oh. Um, so you know, glad glad you you know braved the camera and came out here and joined us. Um, and that, uh, you know, stay tuned because we're going to obviously show the episode that you and I created. This has been the behind the episode. Uh, any closing parting thoughts for the, the coaching consulting world sitting out there that uh, uh, any parting words of wisdom for them before we wrap up? Well, I, I think the comments that Chris just made are, are really very useful for me to think about and for all, all coaches and consultants to think about. What are those questions that get asked consistently? What questions were you wished, do you wish you get asked and yeah. think about how to, you know, prepare a response? So great. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Well, we're going to get to your episode in just a minute, uh, but Chris has got some parting words for our audience as well before we roll the tape and get to, you know, we call it rolling the tape. There's no tape. There's not been tape in years. But, you know, roll the tape. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like filming. You know, who films? Chris, save me from myself. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll do Wrap that. us up. <laughs> so if you're interested in being a better leader, if you're interested in understanding the keys to leadership success, you want to stick around and watch Rosalind's episode. She's got that for you, and she's got a very special offer at the end. You've got to wait to the end to stick around to get Secret code. Secret code, yes. If you're a coach or consultant and realize that being on Expert Showcase and getting yourself your very own free piece of, yes, I did say free, piece of video content marketing material is going to help push your visibility, credibility, and authority forward faster, say that 12 times fast, then what you want to do is head over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow apply button, send us your information, we'll take a look if we feel you're going to be a good guest, uh, feel you're a good fit for Expert Showcase, we'll reach out, we'll get you on as our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. And finally, if you're a coach or consultant, and you're still watching this, which if you're hearing my voice, you obviously are, and you realize that having your own internet talk show and producing video content on a consistent basis is going to help you build visibility, credibility, and authority with your niche and with the niche that you want to that you want to build and, and build your success. So we want you to head over to videocontent.agency. And check out our services page. You have to take a breath every now and then. So once again, <laughs> coaches and consultants who want to build visibility, credibility, and authority through video and video content marketing, head over to videocontent.agency. Check out the services page. Um, take a look at our visibility, credibility, and authority packages. Pick, pick the one that's right for you. Reach out to us. Let's make sure we're a good fit to work together. And uh, we'll get you started on your own internet talk show. And now I'm going to... Roll the tape. Roll the tape. <laughs> Today on Experts Showcase, our guest is Rosalind Spiegel talking about the number one key to leadership success. <music> Rosalind, welcome to Experts Showcase. So glad to have you today. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. Well, thanks for being here. Just to get people's minds on the right wavelength, give us just a little overview of what we're going to focus on in today's episode about leadership success. Sure. Well, you know, there's so many books that have been written about leadership. There's primal leadership and resonant leadership and emotional leadership and all kinds of different leadership. But, but one of the constant variables to all those books is self-awareness. So I think the number one key to leadership is self-awareness. 
Okay, and we're going to cover three main things when we were pre prepping for the show. So I'm just going to do a quick rundown of what those are, and then we'll go through those. So self-awareness is the first thing we're going to talk about, along with awareness of others, and then communication. So these all sound like really important uh, skills if you're the leader or if you're looking to increase that leadership. So tell me about self-awareness. When you're working uh, in your role as a consultant, working with, with leadership, trying to help people develop leadership, what do you focus on in the self-awareness area? Right. Well, you know, there are lots of different ways to get to self-awareness. I happen to have an instrument that I use, but people use spiritual practice, all kinds of different things. But one of the reasons to develop self-awareness is it gives you a lot more confidence and mastery. So, and if you are delivering communication, which we'll get to in a minute, and mm -hmm. hearing communication, then it also gives you a very strong place to stand from. So if you're hearing something that's very complimentary or you're hearing something that's not so complimentary, then you can still be very centered in what you are listening to and how you can respond. So if you're clear about what your strengths are and where you're coming from, you can respond in a way that's not defensive or or you know, sort of angry. It's it's just you're looking for you're hearing information, you're delivering information and you can be really clear about what it is you've got to give to the situation, the conversation, the organization. So, so that self-awareness, being really kind of centered, being really solid, I mean, having that sense of integrity that you're not kind of faking it, I guess, I mean, is all kind of part of what inspires people to to see you as a leader, right? I mean, right. I mean, if you really know, uh, you know, as a consultant and as a coach, you really have to know. If you walk into a system, the minute you walk through the door, that's an intervention. So you have to know mm. what it is you're bringing in with you, right? And same as with a leader of an organization. A leader of an organization really shapes the whole culture. Mm -hmm. So what is that culture? Are you aware of what it is you're shaping and is it is it what you really want to be shaping? I think also one of the key things to this self-awareness is being really clear about what your purpose is in life. You know, mm -hmm. what's your own personal vision mission? If you've got a company or a nonprofit or an organization, you're pretty clear on what the vision is and what the mission is. But do you have that kind of stand for yourself? And I think it's very important to have that because that's sort of in an organization and in your life. If you've got that thing in the future that's really calling you from the future into the present and it's just pulling you forward to where you want to go. And I just saw a quote the other day that was something like if you, you know, if you shoot, it's not having a vision is like shooting an arrow without a target. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what, what would be worse than to follow a leader who's walking around in circles, right? I mean, uh, you, you know, you, you need that sense that this is a person who has vision, who has a sense of where we're going, uh, that that inspires me to want to be part of that movement, part of that mission, part of that, uh, that organization that's trying to have some kind of impact on changing things, right? Right, yeah, and also a real sense of what their own life is for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, purpose, that, that big why, right? Mm-hmm. Well, so, okay, self-awareness, clearly a very big component of, uh, of what has to be developed for a leader. What about awareness of others that you're talking about here? Right, so most of us uh, don't work all by ourselves, you know, and even if we're solopreneurs, there are obviously people that we have to work with. So what are their strengths? What are What is their purpose in life? Where are they coming from? How is it that we can best deliver communication and feedback to them? And also sort of how do we hear that feedback as well, right? But if we mm -hmm. understand what people are and what their purpose is, then we can really speak to them in a way that's much more motivating. So I think that's uh, that's an important piece of working with others. And also as an organizational leader, you sort of are looking down into the organization, but you're also scanning the environment. So you're leading the organization and you're really the, the boundary between the internal organization and the rest of the world, right? So as you scan the environment, what is it that you see? You know, you're not just communicating with people inside your organization, in other words. So how you scan the environment, what it is you're looking for, what are the trends you're looking for, how strategic are you in your thinking, and as you develop your community partnerships. So it's also sort of a way of being aware of uh, others in terms of your own strategic mission and goals. And do you actually, of course, I mean, as a consultant, I would want every organization to have a strategic plan. So are you engaging with the right people to make sure that that plan and your organization is moving forward? Right, because, you know, obviously self-awareness alone isn't going to cut it. I mean, I can be very self-aware, but then if I'm going to assume that, that everyone's just going to come along for the ride, then I'm going to be in for a pretty rude awakening, right? So I have to get pretty good at understanding 
other people's motives, how to get them to buy into the vision, to get them uh, to to really work as as units and teams toward that that vision, right? That's right, yeah. And also just being aware that, you know, I mean, I know it might come as a shock to most of us, but other people don't think the same way we do. No. So I, I know, right? <laughs> so uh, one example I like to use is a person that was working with me on my website who was very detail-oriented and asking me all these questions about the font and the color and the white space. And, you know, it's like, ugh, I was getting, I just noticed I was getting very defensive because I don't tend to think about those sorts of details. Mm -hmm. But that's the information she needed to help me make the best decision for my website. So as soon as I, when I understood where she was coming from and where my sort of defensiveness was coming from, you know, we could just move forward and have a great relationship and hopefully a great website too. So, Yeah, good example. Makes a lot of sense. Well, and that's a great segue then to, to our third point then, which is, okay, I'm aware of myself, I'm aware of others, but now I've got to use my words, as, as somebody, uh, you know, might have said in second or third grade. Right? Use your words, right? <laughs> yeah. So communication. I mean, um, when you're working with an organization, I mean, how do you how do you tackle communication, which has got to be probably what ninety nine percent of your work? <laughs> yes, ninety nine percent of my work. I really I work with the human systems, so I don't work with the technical systems. I don't work with the accounting systems. I really I, I, the people are the are the folks that I work with, and organizations are fundamentally human systems. And I think that the vast majority of problems that organizations face have to do with no communication, poor communication, miscommunication. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can sort of figure out different communication styles, where people are coming from, what their own motivators and values are, how they express that in the world, then we can overcome so many of the problems that exist in organizations today. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of team building activities and it's just, you know, if, if people just become aware of, you know, how they communicate and what their sort of general behaviors and characteristics are and look, I mean, it's it doesn't have to take a long time, you know, it's just a few paragraphs worth of data about yourself and others and just sort of sitting together and pointing out, oh yeah, you're like that, oh yeah, you're like that, and oh yeah, when you communicate, then all of a sudden it really, it lightens things up, you know, people understand that, you know, you're not, atta you're not being attacked, you're not attacking, it's just a different style and it can make so much difference, so much more pro productive, happy workplaces. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, in every relationship, right? I mean, at any level, communication tends to be the key thing. We're we're very verbal creatures, uh, and uh, we live in an age where there's so many ways to communicate, but so many ways to miscommunicate as well, right? <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> more, more channels do not necessarily mean better communication. They're just more ways to mess up your communication if you're not careful. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, there's that. There's that. That's true. Yeah, and I'm, well, I'm talking pretty much face-to-face -face communication. Yeah, definitely. Well, Rosalind, I'm going to uh, you know, wrap us up here a little bit, and then I'm going to tell people how to get in touch with you if they are looking for some help with their organization with some of these key features that we're talking about here. So we've been talking with Rosalind Spiegel about the number one key to leadership success, which you know, we're actually giving you three keys, but the number one being you know, self-awareness. Uh, we've talked about self-awareness. We've talked about the importance of awareness of others and then bringing it all together with how you communicate that, how you move people uh, as a leader to, to follow and achieve the goals and, and realize the vision of, uh, of what is going on here. So Rosalind, if people want to get in touch with you, I know there's a couple of different ways, and I'm going to, since I'm going blind, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually see my notes here. So you're offering a complimentary online assessment of uh, behaviors and motiv motivators. You, you mentioned that you, you use a tool. Is this the one that you were talking about, uh, or one of yeah. them? Yep, that's the one. Okay, so if you um, you've got a couple of websites here, so basically you can find the link on her website. It's SpiegelConsulting.com. We'll be putting it up on screen. So if you go to SpiegelConsulting.com/services, but you can also go to uh, TTISurvey.com. And your special offer here is that there's a code that will allow you to get this. Uh, uh, 
make this online assessment complimentary. So that secret code is on screen. I'm not going to tell you. So if you're listening, you've got to come and watch the video. How, how tricky is that of me? Yeah, so come, come and watch the video and get the secret code and then uh, visit Rosalind's website. Get connected with her. And if your organization <clears throat> is is needing help in these departments, if you're the leader and you're not self-aware enough, uh, you need awareness, uh, you need help with communication to move this, this organization forward, then Rosalind is the person to talk to. Right. Well, Rosalind, thanks so much for being our guest expert today on Expert Showcase. It's been a pleasure having you. Yeah, can I just say that along Absolutely. with that report? Okay, yeah, people, I, it does come with a complimentary debrief, so you don't just get a report and try and figure out what it's all about. I mean, I'll actually walk you through it and do a debrief so we can make sense of it together. Excellent. So you get not only the report, you get a little consulting thrown into the mix there, and uh, you get to see if you guys have a great working relationship or, or not. Perfect. Right. So take advantage of that, folks. And another great expert showcase episode. Chris, what should people do right now? Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Expert Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral, and we give you a a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your your business so what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com click on the big yellow apply button and apply to be our next featured guest on the expert showcase now if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said.